Hey, this is JC with Beyond 20. Today we're going to take a look at reports in ServiceNow. This is just going to be kind of a, a brief overview of them. Uh, and the reason I want to do this is just to really show how simple they are. Um, and so to get here, if we go under reports and you can search for reports and then click view run, you'll see a list of reports. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of out of the box ones, which we can take a look at here in a minute. Um, and then you can either build a new report or check out those reports. Uh, in this case, I want to look at a really simple one. Uh, and that's just all incidents by state. And so we can see here what it's going to look like. We have the incident count um, as well as the state. So the first thing that we have when we create a report is what is the actual data that we're looking for. So in this case, we're going to give it a name, all incidents by state, our source type, which is a table. Uh, we could choose a data source as well. And then what is the table that we're looking for? So because we want to see all incidents by state, the table is just incident. The type is going to be, how do you want to actually appear? And so in this case, they chose the bar graph, which definitely makes sense. You have histogram, you have donut, you have pi. You can do time series, multi-dimensional reports, scores, and other. Just really just quite a bit of different reports that you can run for different visualizations depending on what you want to see and how you want to see it. So for this, since we said it's all instance by state, the group by is state. You can add additional group by if you want. You can also stack if you would like. So if I want to stack it by assigned to, for instance, I could do stacked bars or I could do group bars. Uh, it doesn't take immediate effect right here, but if I went to next right here, we can see that it's doing that here. I'm going to go back here and so set this back to none. We then have our aggregation. In this, we wanted to do a count, but you could do the average sum, count distinct, maximum, or minimum. So then we'll go to style. Once we've gotten that set up, um, you can see here there's various things you can do. You can change the chart color. Um, you can set your color, display the data labels if you'd like where to display them. Uh, the custom chart size, if you'd like. Uh, you can add drill downs um, if you're using decimals. Um, since this is going to be whole numbers only, there's no, uh, no real need to have a decimal precision here. But if you're doing like an average, for instance, you might need uh, having that decimal might be useful. Just some things you can do with the title here, the size of the chart title, the color, uh, the alignment, and then the axis. You can add titles if you want. So while it's super easy, it's really kind of all encompassing too, because it, as you went through that, it's including everything that you would really, in the most part, look for when you're creating a report. So they're really easy to create, they really use easy to edit. I'm just going to go back here, discard my changes. This is what I said in the beginning. So I just like I said I went to view run here. And all of these reports are out of the box. Uh, we can go to all here. And we can see, you might not be able to see that, but we are on 20 of 629. So there are plenty of out-of-the-box reports to take a look at. Um, you don't have to just do a general search. Or I'm sorry, you don't have to just generally look. You can do a search. So if I want to see things related to change, to active change requests, conflicted changes, change calendar, change request by category. So definitely take a look at what's out-of-the-box before you start trying to create your own. 
it's likely it might already be created. Uh, and then if it's not, like I said, you, you have the ability to create one yourself and that button is right up here. That's all I've got for today. Thank you and have a great day.